to quickly talk about or wrap up this story because it's been rumbling on and on and on which is a bit of a non-story but you know i think it's a slow news day and people are just a bit stressed out about life and whatnot obviously i covered molly may on here before somebody who had no idea who that person was before the lockdown again spending too much time at home has made me spend too much time on my phone i'm sure most of you guys and girls out there have done the same thing i'm always glued to my phone now i'm always on social media always checking my feed and i get to see way more stuff than i did prior because i was always out and about and i just generally had a bit of a detached relationship from my phone but now throughout the pandemic even until now i'm just on it too much i think even the other day when i got my report in terms of my screen time it was crazy high number so i've kind of decided to give instagram a break I'm still probably on Twitter too much, but in terms of all other social media, I'm just kind of hanging back and just trying to get my life right and obviously read some books in terms of entertain myself that way. But in that time, I found out who Molly May was. I found out a bit about her. I found out how people seem to like her on, online and so especially on the, the, the kind of social media, Instagram blogs that I checked that are mostly kind of uh, marketed towards the black community as opposed to the white community. But in general, I think in the UK, when it comes to celebrity sort of life, it all kind of meshes and melds in together because everyone watches the same reality tv shows they follow the same music it's all kind of the same sort of thing anyway um this lady she's 22 years old she's you know really rich really famous people seem to think she's hot i'm not really the biggest fan but whatever um she's smashing it she's doing really well for herself and she went on a podcast to have an interview with this other entrepreneur guy she spoke about her struggle her ups and downs her story you know this typical entrepreneur thing and in some way in the interview she mentioned about how she you know her work ethic and not having friends and i think i mentioned already in the podcast right how she you know to be as as well off as she is you can't really have a social life and all these sort of things that you'd think are common sense and then she dropped this one little nugget where she's like oh um i think everyone has the ability to do what i do you just have to commit you know a hundred percent and we've all got the same 24 hours in a day to do something you just have to work really hard and for whatever reason saying to people that they had the same 24 hours as everybody else triggered the entire internet and people just started spazzing out going crazy you know writing dissertations talking about how influencing is you know fundamentally racist which i can't really get my head around wrapped around in but i'm really grateful for my twitter feed because i do follow a lot of people who i think you know talk a lot of rubbish but they also present a different perspective in terms of societal or cultural conversation pieces right and i can kind of tell, sometimes see the, the opposite side i can hear what the opposite side are thinking instead of making up the argument in my head i can actually hear what they're saying and it's interesting very very interesting but incredibly um, off the mark for me because I don't think there's anything racist about influencing I don't think what she said was was wrong maybe it was distasteful maybe it was ill-advised maybe she didn't quote-unquote read the room but I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing you know your experience and also sharing anecdotal evidence that hey I think I was a nobody and I was one of many other blonde, blue-eyed girls in this country. But somehow, I think the reason why I got here is because of my hard work. Now, of course, it's more layered than that. We know that. But it wasn't a bad thing to say. People rumbled on. People got annoyed. And now, the final chapter of it is that she finally put out a statement via Instagram where she kind of, you know, apologizes, I guess, to some extent, or tries to explain herself. And it says the following here. I went to come back online today as normal. But I feel like before I do that, I just wanted to say this. When I was when I say or post anything online, it is never with malice or ill intent. I completely appreciate that things can affect people differently in different ways. However, I just want to stress that I would never intend to hurt or upset anyone by anything that I have to say or do. Imagine having to apologize. This is the sucky thing about being an influencer or being somebody else well known. Number one, when you talk, you have to always have disclaimers at the beginning or at the end of what you're saying or anything in the middle. That's what basically fucked her up, right? Because she didn't have a disclaimer. She didn't say, well, hey, I'm not talking about people who obviously have, you know, don't have the means to kind of focus on their side hustle. I'm not talking about people who are single parents. I'm talking about people who are not able-bodied. She has, she has to, that's what she had wanted people, that's what people wanted her to do. They wanted her to do that kind of disclaimer dance and then give her opinion. If you just give your opinion based on your evidence or based on your kind of anecdotal experience or basically based on your life experiences or whatever it may be, people suddenly get all, all their niggas and twists because they think you're immediately writing off a, a you know huge part of the population when it's like it's not that serious really in it i'm just talking about me because the person's asking about me um it continues here it says i apologize to the people that have been <laughs> affected negatively or misunderstood um the meaning of what i had to say on the podcast the intention of the podcast were only ever to tell my story and inspire from my own experience love you all always
the love you all thing is weird as all people saying love you what you don't whatever but that's the bad thing about getting being an influencer you're always kind of um you're as much as you can exploit your fans to make a lot of money look what the Kardashians do it's also on a knife edge because they can decide whether or not you have a career or not it's really odd right it's that kind of balance but then also if you get in trouble you have to kind of get up in front of the flipping you know in front of the whole town and basically sing for your supper and apologize that's the only kind of demeaning part of it i would feel like like why am i apologizing for something that i generally think i didn't do anything wrong but if you want these people to keep following you and to buy your overpriced lipstick and to buy your collaborations with whatever, whatever it may be, or to give a fuck that you're engaged or not engaged, I mean, if you want that to happen, you have to apologize. You kind of have to, quote unquote, bend the knee. And that must be one of the most in, in, you know, annoying things that have ever existed in the history of the world. Um, I think someone, it's a good, it's a clip, the next slide, and we end it there. No, it's not the clip. Okay, it doesn't matter. But you, you know what the clip is. You, you know what she said. It is what it is. Um, I think it was a nonsense issue. Having to apologize or something like that is flipping nutty. But we're living in nutty times in it, so I shouldn't have expected anything different than that.